Along with Trent, you could really put both in there. It's a one-two punch. Julian Fleming, I think, is big. With Smith and Jigba out, he's got to be able to step up. Benton, 95, a veteran in the middle. And then off the edge, the, the pressure will come from 19, Herbig. The Hawaiian moves all over the place. He tries to disrupt quarterbacks. They get into the edge, and that's a quick catch by Marvin Harrison, Jr., who's been on fire. Five touchdowns this season, eight in the last four games. Go back to the Rose Bowl. Boy, that, I, you know, you take some chances, Chris, as a corner. Here, C.J. Stroud feels the freshman corner kind of sinking in. He lost leverage there on the taller receiver, Harrison. He got inside. See, see how he kind of jumped that route? Allowed Harrison to have a lot of room to work with on that alley towards the boundary. There's some inexperienced corners on both sides oh, yeah. tonight. Yeah. It's going to be a serious storyline. Henderson motions out, empty backfield in this first time play. Strat across the middle, throws a dart, and it's Cage Stover, the tight end, who's becoming an increasingly important part of this attack, getting vertical. Well, what he's doing is he's hitting the seams right through here, right through the middle of this defense. And they're going to play zone. you got to make this throw and throw it on the line in between those backers and in front of that safety, just as he did there. Well thrown and good timing. These first few three, three or four games, we're seeing Stroud really dial up Stover in the middle of that defense. Cade Stover almost went to Wisconsin as a linebacker. We'll tell you his story. He's a farm kid and extremely proud of it and very... Country strong as they say. <laughs> Wisconsin actually recruited him very heavily. 43 yards in the first two pass plays, and now they hand it off to Henderson, who's got a seam, and he's knocked down after a gain inside the Wisconsin 35. Well, you just talked about Stover. We just saw him make a, a really good catch, and they come right back, and now he set, helps set the edge there on the left side with Paris Johnson. Nice double team up to the edge. Good blocking downfield, but as Ohio State wide receivers and plenty of room. Good mix here early by this Ohio State offense and Ryan Day. Formations, per an L grouping really giving Wisconsin a lot to deal with here. Make them communicate on the first series. Stover going across in motion to the right now. Strad looking across the middle and he flips it down and the catch is made by Ibuka who fights toward the pylon and is forced out at the one. John Torchio saved the touchdown but it's first and goal. Boy, really good job of Stroud keeping his focus. I'll tell you, he's getting the ball thrown behind the linebackers and in front of the safeties. He, he gets pressure. Look at the linebackers. They're looking for crossers. They're not thinking about the vertical shots downfield in the seams. Second time now that Stroud's been able to hit that. There's a progressive pylon cam that shows you that Abuka is definitely pulled out of bounds, but a great route and good timing there with Stroud. Wow, just like that, they are knocking the door at Mayan Williams. Big physical back, gets the football and fights through some tackles and leans. Touchdown, Ohio State comes out swinging. 88 yards to take the lead in six plays. Wow. I mean, that, that's how on a Wednesday or Thursday, you're Ryan Day, your offensive staff. That's how you draw off your opening drive. There's a little bit of penetration. Gives you an idea that leg drive by Mayan Williams. He definitely gets across and gets the ball across that goal line. The progressive pylon cam. Watch the knee. Still up. Still up. And the, as he comes down, it looks like that ball did cross the goal line. But boy, Ryan Day could not be any happier with what he just witnessed right there. Six plays, 88 yards, under three minutes, and a little bit of everything, but those seam routes hurt Wisconsin badly. Yeah, you don't see a Wisconsin defense look that confused, that out of position often. Sky cast on the ESPN app and the ESPN free. Well, folks, just getting settled in here, and boom, the Ohio State offense right down the field. Six plays, 88 yards, throwing, running, you know, you know when we were, whatever they wanted. We were here for Notre Dame, and C.J. Stroud said, yeah, we know people are going to sit back and play zone against us, but we still feel that we can make big plays when people sit back. They, they only had one against Notre Dame here. They just had a couple big ones on the seam route to the tight end and the slot receiver, Buka. Isaac Garendo, part of that running back rotation, back to receive the kickoff of Jaden Fielding. Wisconsin did not come in here hoping to get involved in a shootout. I can guarantee you that. We'll see if Mertz and this offense, which will be out without Kirk, 
It's two starting tackles. Jack Nelson is left at home with an illness. Ryan Malman is out, so you've got different guys stepping up, flipping around, and it's going to be tricky in this environment. Yeah, and you've got a quarterback that, that needs to play consistently. You know, that, that's been the one area. He has so much talent, and it's been his focus in the offseason coming into this year is working with a lot of new personnel. You know, Jake Ferguson's no longer here, right, to catch balls. You no longer see Danny Davis or Kendrick Pryor, all these guys that were here forever breaking in an entire new group around him in this environment. And by the way, your two starting tackles are out. So Sal Paul decides to call these plays here early in this game. Paul Christ and Bobby Ingram, the former wide receiver star of Penn State and the NFL, is calling plays for this offense. Mert says, I love road games, us against the world. Okay, you got it, Graham. Braylon Allen, the tall sophomore tailback, the latest in Wisconsin's excellent tradition with the first carry. Well, let's look at our Chick-fil-A impact players for Wisconsin. And I tell you, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. You know, you, you know about Braylon Allen, how they can establish him. You just saw him. We got Logan Brown on the board. He's a five-star recruit. Hasn't played a lot of football, but is in because Jack Nelson is sick and not available. Tommy Eichenberg's done a really good job of picking up Jim Knowles' new scheme coming over from Oklahoma State. Eichenberg's been sensational. And Jair Brown with a corner situation. Cam Brown down, Denzel Burke down. Some of these young corners, only three scholarship corners playing tonight. This is Braylon Allen in the direct snap, knocked down near the market. It'll be third and very short, so an early wrinkle. Yeah, and the big fella is able to break a tackle there. It's a good job of being able to shake off. It looked like Steel Chambers had a chance to bring him down. Right there in the backfield, and it gives you an idea how powerful a runner he is. Get him throw that shoulder. Yeah, he, he just throwing. You know, Derrick Henry throwing that shoulder there on the edge. Allen averaging 6.6 .6 per carry. And they give it to him on third and short, and he just falls forward for a first down. This is a Wisconsin offensive line with belief in itself, but they could use a positive start, especially down a quick seven hey, points. Hey, it's third and short. Look at this surge by the left side. I mean, they, they completely collapse. It's like, a, it's, and compared to the Ohio State highlights, you're like, what the heck? They gained two yards. But third and short, after a quick score for Ohio State, just to be able to get a first down, they know you're going to run it. That's Wisconsin football. You lean on them up front, and you give it to the big back, and you get the yards for the first down. But Ohio State front, they get Michael Hall Jr. back. One of the stars against Notre Dame has missed the last couple. He's a difference maker in here. They hand the ball to Garendo. Does he get the corner? No. Nice pursuit to the edge by Tommy Eichenberg. But really, you saw a lot of Ohio State defenders there running to the football. Look at this team pursuit. Guys getting off box blocks. There's Young Styles. Sonny Styles, 20. He didn't make the tackle, but he sure helped slow him down. This guy, Sonny Styles, is supposed to be a senior in high school right now, and he's out there playing for the Ohio State defense. Even Ohio State fans are going to say, who are these guys playing in the secondary tonight? We'll, we'll fill you in. Mertz on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off. Tanner McAllister, the safety still alive. And will finally be wrestled out the 15. A quick takeaway and a mistake by Mertz. Uh, th this is, if you're a Wisconsin fan, you're sitting there saying, oh, no, not again. This is what's killed Graham Mertz as a starter. He's got, again, so much potential, but a poor throw. He's the receiver's right here. Tanner's right here is a safety playing man-to-man -man on the slot receiver. Gets pretty good separation, but before he throws this ball, he should be throwing it out here. Look where he throws the ball. Behind his receiver. Right when he threw it, he put his hands in the air, knew that it was a poor throw, and a heck of a job by McAllister, who transferred over with Jim Knowles from Oklahoma State. Does a good job showing the hands there to make that interception. He was the guy who was out last week against Toledo. It's been an injury-riddled secondary, and all smiles there. The safeties have to be solid tonight with those new guys at corner. Now, meanwhile, Stroud a chance to build this lead from the 16. Henderson picks his way, and he's knocked down 
after a three-yard gain. And this is a Badger defense that, I mean, right away, Kirk, it's early. But you know the challenge coming in here. You've got to be spinning at this point. You know, Ohio State's offense, it's like you're in a 100-meter race, and they just got off to a 20-meter start. Like, it's just, and you can't catch up to them. I mean, it, it, they have that kind of an ability because of the way they can score. It, it's, it's early in this game, but you, you don't want to get down 14 with the offense that you have on the road. they got to try to hold Ohio State to a field goal. Stroud rolls to his left and now throws back to a right and wide open is Stover who somersaults for a touchdown. It can be frightening when this offense is clicking and the guys at all black are doing that so far. You get a motion here and that's important pre-snap because watch what it does to the Badger defense. Now they lose sight of Stover. Completely lose him. Nobody picks him up. He sneaks out but a great job of developing and designing that play by Ryan Day and his staff. Completely forgot about the tight end after that motion. And Stover, the guy who was making tackles as a linebacker in the Rose Bowl, comes over to the tight end room and scores his first career touchdown. Stroud knew exactly how to play that. And Stover showing the athleticism. 14-0 Ohio State, midway first quarter. Back in those days, I don't know what they do. I don't know, there there's, there there's. I don't know, was he were close to the stadium? Yeah. yeah. Now, this will be a touchback, and the Badgers will begin trying to chip away at the early deficit. To Kevin Nagandi for an update and a wild one. Sure was. And now for our Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update in the Pac-12. Oregon down 12 in the fourth, and then Dan, Bo next to Troy Franklin. Bo Nix right there hits the bender by the, at the seam right there. There's no safe to be found. The game's never over. They battle back. But then the Ducks defense seals it. May spoon on the pick six. 21 points in three minutes for Oregon. They hold on 44-41. Back to Chris Kirk and Holly. Wow. You remember that Michigan State game last year? We were all excited. It was supposed to be a big game, and an avalanche set in early. Wisconsin needs to avoid that. Garendo trying to avoid the swarming Buckeye defense, and Eichenberg again invading the backfield. They've got him for about a six-yard loss. But this, this defensive line has been challenged to get some penetration, and they are taking their orders. Good job of getting off blocks, getting slippery. Tron Vincent makes a play. There's the middle linebacker we talked about a little bit earlier. Eichenberg getting in as well. Jack Sawyer. Uh, you said, remember the Michigan State game? I mean, it was supposed to be a big game. Ohio State oh, yeah. hit him, hit him. Remember defense, it too well. Three and out, three. And next thing you know, I mean, the, the game was over in the first quarter. Badgers right now just trying to settle into the game. Behind the sticks on second and 15. Allen. And he gets about half the necessary yards. It'll be third and long. Holly? Well, guys, after that interception by Graham Mertz on the Wisconsin sideline, guys all went up to him, trying to encourage him, keep his confidence up. Remember last year, more interceptions than touchdowns. But he told us this week, I'm different. I've gone through adversity, and I can put quick things behind me. The guys on his team were trying to get his spirits up, make sure that he can go out there and put that last play behind him. They need him to perform right now. Remember, Holly, it's tough. I mean, he's grown, but he's got a lot of young people playing around him tonight. See how they hold up here on third down on the edge. He needs seven. Buckeyes will rush five. Mertz will take a downfield shot and way over the head of Giantes Lewis, the transfer from UCLA, their best deep foot, covered by J.K. Johnson, fourth down. Yeah, you have Proctor back there as well. Ohio State just doubling, take away their, their most legitimate threat. 50-50 ball with Paul Chris here. Even though the booth is exactly 102 yards to the center of the block, Ohio, from where we stand, 102 yards, the length of a field. How'd you get that? Derek Mobley, our director, oh, really? a little range finder. Oh, all okay. yes, I, because I ask him. It's, it's We're a long ways away. Yeah, that's pretty good, 102. But we're close enough to know that Ohio State looks really good on offense so far. <laughs> they pitch it to the edge, and the catch is made by Ibuka. Gets a blocker, spins through some tackles, and Ohio State, whatever Ryan Day is calling, they're executing very well. Again, they use.
used to motion. Wisconsin does not adjust, and Ohio State with an easy throw there. Torchio, the safety, does not come over. He's a little bit slow and easy decision there. Now it's Harrison who makes the catch. Stroud, six for six, already over 100 yards in the first eight minutes of play. You and I have been to a lot of these Thursday practices at Ohio State, and, and Wisconsin's defense is very talented. They're young, but right now they're, they're, they're confused. And it looks like the rhythm of C.J. Stroud and how he's throwing in such command, it just looks like a Thursday practice and the way he's zipping his ball around. You know what Jim Knowles does when they go good on good? They bring out eight or nine db so it's not seven on seven it's seven on eight or nine just to make things tougher for Stroud. <laughs> i asked ryan Dave, did, did you ask them to do that he said no no they just sneak extra dbs out there but it yeah. does give him a sense well, of a real challenge and i think you're now seeing you know when, when ryan day has a quarterback that is in the second year in the system i think you can really see them go to a different level as far as his understanding, the quarterback's understanding of the scheme and the protections. And he said that's the area he's changed the most, his preparation, his practice habits, how he gets ready for a game. He gets it now because he's been through an entire year. So you know, if you're a young quarterback, and a lot of them like to come here, this is a great place to mature and develop and really grow your craft. It's also a place where five-star receivers like to come. Stroud gets the ball out again, complete to Stover, and he barrels for a first down inside the 30. I'm a big eight. I mean, how much is he loving this? When he pulled into the stadium today, I don't know if he thought that these first few drives he's going to have two or three catches, and having he's got three catches now in, in this game, 49 yards and a touchdown. But again, let's go back. It's the spacing, it's the design, it's the formations, personnel groupings. The reason that's important is it puts so much on that defense to communicate. You're seeing a lot emotions they have to adjust and be on the same page and with a lot of youth on that side of the ball that's why i think you're seeing them hesitant a little bit slow a little bit confused and with that spacing a lot of spots to, a lot of area to throw for stroud play clock winding at two and they'll call a timeout stover has become one of my favorite guys in college football to talk to he's as you mentioned a farm guy very proud of that he would get up you know before dawn do the chores before he goes to school just learned hard work and physical labor at a young age when he eventually finishes football wants to use some nfl money go back and buy a bunch of acres near the family farm in lexington but you do that kind of stuff oh man from a young age do not challenge that dude to an arm wrestle. Oh, his gosh, his forearm, the, the tensile strength of that guy. Oh, he's throwing hay around. He's he's blocking the cattle. I mean, he's doing everything <laughs> out there. <laughs> he says he's very comfortable in space as a tight end. He played, you know, inside linebacker in high school, running around. He's much more comfortable doing that than actually down in traffic blocking. But he does that pretty well too. Well, he, you know, and and they lost a, a great tight end last year who now is playing with uh, with the New York Jets and I think everybody assumed that they would have a, a drop back drop uh, in that position but he has really shown what he can do as a blocker and a receiver hand it off on the left side Henderson breaks the tackle and darts down near the 10 yard line so Trevion Henderson back and looking really healthy tonight Watch this offensive line really doing a good job here. And I think the timing between Henderson, he kind of sets those blocks up, stays on his tracks, shows the patience to allow them to work that double team and get up to those backers. Really good timing and in sync between the boys up front and the tailback. Let's take a look at the scheme. And you can imagine what's going on inside the helmets of these Badger defenders. And over there with Jim Leonard, who's as good as it gets, but they are... Really dazed at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Henderson weaves his way through traffic, accelerates and barges out at the one yard line. Jay Shaw forced him out, but the Buckeyes again on the doorstep. I, I, I mean, the execution, you're going to look forward if you're an Ohio State player to go into the film room. Look at look at the blocking. Look at the running lanes here. I mean, the big right tackle, Dewan Jones, who dropped some weight to get quicker to be able to get up to the second level. There it is on the far right, 79. Look at him get up to that backer. The receivers are blocking. You saw Stover. Off of the farm, <laughs> out here playing. A nice kick out block. They're throwing folks around like the art bales I hate down there. First and goal. And Stroud still got it, and he just flips it into the end zone to Stover again. The second 
for the tight end. They're just having fun with this vaunted Badger defense right now. And just one step ahead of you. One step ahead of you with Ryan Day right now. You think they're looking at his formation. They're going to run the ball. Instead, they have Stover. He's going to work out to the flat. Watch that defense react. And now you got two guys. They're worried he's going to run it in. Both try to take Stroud out, leave Stover wide open for an easy touchdown down pass. Once Ryan Day gets a hang of this play design thing. Hey, hey, give him a little time. He'll, yeah. get, he'll get it there. It's going gonna, gonna to be something. <laughs> wow. We said they come out throwing haymakers. It was seven touchdowns in seven possessions against Toledo. We figured, oh, it's a different animal now. Big Ten play. Here comes Wisconsin. Same, same. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it reminds me a lot of what we saw last year. I, I just think the, again, the feel being a step ahead of you. How about Stroud selling it, too? He, he put that ball under and made it look like, hey, I'm going to run. That, that drew both of those defenders towards him. They're trying to beat him to the corner, and there's just nobody left for, again, our guys. Stover with another great play and another touchdown. Second of the night. Yeah, first two of his career. He's looking around. Wait a minute. Is this, this is this supposed to be this easy on the offensive side? I mean, Stroud's worked hard on his body. We'll talk about that. Rounded out his game. Much more comfortable outside the pocket throwing on the move. Not that it was ever a weakness, but he has improved in that area. Yeah, yeah I think he's improved in so many areas. I, like I said, that second year took this offseason incredibly serious in a lot of different ways, studying film, working out. Unacceptable, Kirk. There's a mistake by Ohio State here. They've kicked the ball out of bounds, and that penalty was spotted at the 35. <laughs> So Graham Mertz will trot out there, and they are down three scores. And they've run eight plays, and Mertz is 0 for 2. Tomorrow morning, Sunday NFL Countdown comes on the air at 10 Eastern time, 101 with Josh Allen, where he faces the Dolphins in an anticipated showdown. And then on Monday Night Football, MetLife Stadium Cowboys against the undefeated G-Man, 8 Eastern. Manny Cast on ESPN2. Joe and Troy, of course, on ESPN. How do you begin to establish something on offense and chip away, hand the ball off to Ches Malusi, who fights for a couple of yards? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, you get caught up in the game and with what Wisconsin can do. The problem their offense is facing right now, it's not like this Ohio State defense is going to take their foot off the gas. Jim Knowles has really challenged his team, taking over as a first-time defensive coordinator, to say, hey, guys, I know we have a great offense, but aren't you tired of being the, yeah, they have a great offense, but what about their defense? So this entire entire offseason is trying to get this team to become more confident and run around and play with their hair on fire and I think you're seeing that tonight. Mertz steps up and he will get dropped behind the line of scrimmage. And the sack coming from Jack Sawyer off the edge the hybrid they call it the Jack position here. Yeah and he's right here and he just uses his eyes leads him to the ball patient waits waits and then he's there, he sees that he sees the back is there to pick up and try to help out on a chip. So he says, no problem. My back, I don't have to worry about him. I'll come in and get the sack myself. I think they say this guy, of all the defenders learning this new scheme, with Eichenberg in the middle, you're seeing Jack Sawyer really take his game to another level. The five-star who's now a sophomore on the cusp of being really great, they believe. Clock winding down on third and ten. Buckeyes back out, rush four. Mertz still has to step up to avoid pressure on the run. Checks it down, and fighting along the sideline is Skyler Bell. He's run out just a bit short of the marker. Couldn't get there, and it's fourth down again. He, he tried to make a move to the inside, set up Tanner McAllister, try to give him a little bit more room, but as he tries to get to that first down marker, that left foot steps out of bounds. A good yard, yard and a half short of the first down. Paul Chris didn't want to. Maybe he thought about it for a second, but sends out the punt team. Usually when he feels like he's going to get in a game with an offense that he can't slow down, he will take a lot of risks. He's not known as a real gambler, but often in these cases he'll do things that are out of character. But nothing going right as the punt is shanked out of bounds, a short one, and Stroud and company 
is if they need it, we'll have pretty good field position. Kevin, what have you got? Chris, taking a look at the nightcap window here, week four over on ESPN. Arkansas up 14 to 7 against AM. Kentucky 14 7 lead on ESPN2. SEC Network, number two, Alabama 14 to 3 against Vandy and NC State. They got Clemson next week. Fantastic showdown right now, leading UConn in complete control over on ESPN3. Back to you guys. Busy night window. Kevin McKee updated from the studio. 23 yard punts. Mako just second half. Kevin may take over there. Get some highlights. Get some scores. Big day around the country. Yeah. Stroud incomplete for the first time tonight off the hands of Julian Fleming. As we see the Buckeyes drive chart in the early going, you thought, okay, well, pretty good first quarter. Yeah, 88 yards after the muffed kickoff. No problem. After the pick, it was a 16-yard two-play touchdown drive. And, and again, when you're Jim Leonard as a defense coordinator, you're thinking, okay, what do I do with my safeties? Do I get them down and help out against the run? And now leave myself susceptible to the pass, one-on-one -on -one options for him with all these receivers. Do I stay back and let him run the ball with Mayan Williams and, and, and Trevion Henderson? I mean, that that's the, the, the game that each defense that goes up against Ohio State has to deal with, with those eyes and that experience and Ryan Day. At the left side. This is Williams is knocked down. Notre Dame's defense did pretty well. Ryan Day's explanation early on was that they had so much to look at in the offseason. They weren't sure what the Irish were going to do. Remember, Smith and Jigba got hurt early in the game, so they never really found their rhythm until the fourth quarter with the ground game. Yeah, yeah and, and I th again, they spent an entire offseason dedicating themselves to that in case, because I think at last year at times that was frustrating. Love to watch Ryan Day, how active he is, storming those sidelines, especially in the third down, to make sure he and, again, C. J. Stroud are communicating and on the same page. They move Mayan Williams back and forth to try to get an indicator of what kind of coverage Wisconsin's playing based on how they react. Now they see Blitz. And Stroud on the first third down play of the night finds Harrison on the slant who's got the first down and a lot more into Wisconsin territory. And, you know, again, you, you're, you're dealing with a guy who has the chalk last. Oh, you're going to bring this? Oh, you're going to bring this? Okay. I have an answer for that. Doesn't panic. Gets the ball out right where that blitz came from. Gets it to a fleet-footed receiver. But how calm and how he's able to see that, I think, is the important thing. Marvin Harrison limping off there. Keep an eye on that. Harrison has been just about unstoppable since that explosive breakout in the Rose Bowl. So, Jaden Ballard, redshirt freshman from here in Ohio, fills in for him. Three receivers off to the left. They run that direction with Williams. He gets some blocks and runs untouched for about 12 yards before taking a hit in the secondary from Torchio. And again, you, you see Ryan Day involved there, taking a peek down there at Marvin Harrison. Let's go back and take a peek at, at this play. It's that third down, the blitz, the catch, and then the contact. It, look, it looked like he was up and okay, and then you could see he was needed to get off the field. Pretty good first quarter there for Ohio State. Yeah, 210 total yards. When he hit face first with his eyes, he's back out there and ready to go. And it's important because Jackson Smith and Jigba still out as they're very cautious with his return to play with that hamstring injury. Is that a watch? got a watch on? <laughs> got a half a watch on there. Yes, yes, he does. I don't, I don't think I've seen that. One man's telling time down there and running routes. You do a lot of things with that watch. And they hand it off. And Williams powers left. This will set up third down and about four. There's a lot going on there. Is there designer cleats? I, it may be. Is that Louis Vuitton? Maybe Louis Vuitton, yeah. <laughs> A man is styling. I mean, he just kind of came on the scene. He did break out in the Rose Bowl, but I guess, hey, when you're that good that early, you can swag it, fit in a score. Another third down. They need three here. Well, is the what is this safety? Sorry, Dima, go back to that last look. look. What is this safety going to do is what I want to know. Because if he goes this way, then you got a shot one-on-one. -on -one. Is he going to stay and protect? Williams running to the right. They hit him behind the line. He just spins free. Brian Williams barrels down inside the five. Guy runs with an edge, an attitude, and toughness. But Turner, the middle linebacker, a new starter, he just gets 
indoctrinated into the Big Ten right there. Lowers that shoulder and runs through that potential tackle. Would have kept him short of the first down. But my gosh, Mayan Williams, just when you deal with Henderson and how shifty and quick he is, the big fella out of Cincinnati Wenton Woods lowers that shoulder and can run through those tackles. Buckeyes on the doorstep yet again. Eighth play of this drive. Couple of tight ends in the game. Hand off and just waltzing in untouched is Williams. Four possessions, four touchdowns. Hamstring strains, everything tightens up to protect it, and that's why they linger. They just stay tight, and that's a challenge for the medical staff. Marty, I talked with him before the game, asked him if he's okay and, you know, how soon he might come back. He thinks he may rest it potentially another week. He just wants to be careful with it because, like you said, it's one of those injuries that if you come back, he felt he came back a little bit too soon last week, maybe played a few too many plays, and he felt it. That's why he's pulling himself back. Marty, we're seeing a rash of hamstring injuries, different DBs on both sides affected by that kind of injury early in the season. Well, you know, listen, he's getting intensive treatments of pain management, of strengthening, of inflammation, and the healing hands of the athletic trainers and physical therapists. But the bottom line, he needs rest. Hard to get that rest when these practices are ramping up in both contact and intensity. We hope to see him back soon. Opponents don't. Mertz on second and long, makes a long throw. A flag comes out. Tommy Eichenberg was on the pressure. He's over there looking for DK. Ryan Day says, what's going on? Jair Brown was the man in coverage. What about the true freshman DB stepping up? Maybe a potential hold on the... It's like Beach, maybe, the left card. I don't know. Pass interference. Oh, wow. Defense, number 18. The ball will be placed in the spot of the infraction. Automatic first down. Jerry McGinn in charge of this Big Ten crew. Day is incredulous. It was Brown, the true freshman. Yeah, it was right in front of Ryan Day. Gone to the far right. Grabs the jersey. Bill, that's about the only thing that I can see is that initial jersey grab. Is that you think that, that was what the call was? If that's on the guy that was far shorter, right. that, I don't see that pass as catchable. And the pass is checked down to DK. Bound just trying to establish something but look, here. Again, it's 28-0 Ohio State. It just gives you an idea of the, the competitive spirit, the fire. You know, he always talks about his team fighting. Have that competitive spirit. And despite being up 28, he is not pulling back at all, allowing the official to know how he feels. No, I would not call that pulling back. No, no he's laying into him. He's not done. That was right in front of him. He got a very good view of it. Allen on second and one, picks his way for a first down. We're seeing this defensive side for Ohio State. The, the headlines were all about the offense, and there's 11 touchdowns against Toledo. But Jim Knowles says this defense did not meet their standard. They've given up, Kirk, 150-yard-plus pass play in each of the three games, given up a lot of shock plays. They are buttoned up tonight. So. Yeah, he talked about not containing Toledo last the quarterback, gave up some big plays, and... Uh, and, and that's all part of growing with a new system, no matter who you're playing. Everybody getting on the same page. Again, this is a much more sophisticated scheme than they've been running in recent years. So, Mertz has some ground in front of him, and he'll just scamper for a first down at the 40. Eichenberg chased him out. Graham just two for four, 18 yards in the early going. And again, that's a little thing right there, but just not being on the same page. Zach Harrison with an inside move, and when he makes that inside move, there's nobody there to be able to help set the edge. So if the DN is going to collapse down, somebody's either got to twist around him or a backer to the next level is going to come, come around. But that was an easy... Easy read there for Graham Mertz to be able to see he could get the edge and pick up that first. Allen back in wildcat formation. Joined by Ches Malusi, who takes the handoff, running back to running back, and it fools no one and gains a yard. 
just so limited and you know, when you go to that look the defense right away they've got two options he's going to pull it or keep it himself and no threat at all of him pulling it and throwing a pass so the defense including those safeties you're basically running into a nine-man front when you go to that look Bird steps up and delivers in traffic and it's broken up very nicely by Josh Proctor another one of those safeties they get back this week well, that, that, that's a nice job in an area that I think Josh Proctor has really grown he's known as a kind of a, a hard-hitting safety but a good job of re he saw that from way back the potential threat of him throwing that tight end to the tight end cut cut him and he just took it away with those long arms able to avoid the pass interference and knock the ball away you figure down four scores finally in Ohio State territory. Chris has got a couple plays to get the nine yards. Noisy on third down. Mertz rolls, doesn't see anybody, and just delivers downfield. And getting behind folks is Skyler Bell. And the redshirt freshman out of the box, and the Badgers are set up. The Ohio State 16. Little miscommunication in the back end. Watch Tanner McAllister's eyes. He starts to get caught up in the receiver in front of him. Nobody's back there behind to help him out. Mertz is going to get hit right as he releases the ball, but a good job. I thought he might give up on the play. Waits until the last possible moment to make that throw downfield before Proctor could get, uh, get over. Nice job by Bell. Got 26 on third nine, set up at the 14 now. Allen on the delay, cuts it back to the right. Raylan Allen barrels down to the five-yard line. Allen, the latest in a great tradition of tailbacks at Wisconsin. He's been mentored by Jonathan Taylor. It's a pretty good guy to be mentored by, but he was mentored by guys like Melvin Gordon before him, and it began all the way back with the horse, Allen Amici. Yeah, but I think everybody thinks of that Barry Alvarez era. Fletcher, you go all the way through. Brent Moss, Monte Ball, James White together, Melvin Gordon. Of course, JT, Jonathan Taylor getting it done in Indy, one of the top backs in the NFL. Boy, what an incredible line of running backs and offensive linemen they've had since Alvy came in uh, to Wisconsin in the early 90s. Allen again back as a Wildcat quarterback. And takes it himself and dives down near the goal line. No signal yet. Now he stopped just short. Yeah, they had four Doak Walkers in a nine-year period. <laughs> yeah. Two by Taylor. Yeah. Good, strong running offensive line. Look at that block right there. Good job of putting Ohio State on their back. There was Logan Brown, that young five-star offensive tackle who's been inserted into the lineup. And that's Wisconsin football there with the big back taking a direct snap down inside the five. High formation. Jackson Aker, the fullback. He's in front of Allen. Three tight ends in the game as we pause here on first and go. Holly? Well, I talked with Braylon Allen this week, and he was telling me just how cool it is to have that long line of running backs at Wisconsin because they're all in a group text chat. Can you even imagine? He's on a text chat with Ron Dane, Jonathan Taylor, Melvin Gordon, Corey Clements, Dare Ugumbawale, literally all of the greats who have done anything at Wisconsin football. They give him advice. Um, Melvin Gordon even said to him at a golf tournament this year, this is the next great one. And he said, they're giving me lots of advice, telling me to keep my head down, keep the task at hand, but I'm just dying. I just want to get in on the group chat. Can we? Like, we've yeah. all covered all those running backs. Yeah. Let's see if we can get lobby for it. Uh, that, that list, we just showed the graphic you just talked about. How cool is that? You're a, you're a sophomore. He's a young sophomore yeah. at 18. He's listening to these guys and their wisdom. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he brings humility, strong desire to learn, great mentors to learn from. See if Allen gets the give. Now they'll sneak it with Mertz on first and goal. And the Badgers finally crack the score column. You get a signal, make it official. Did he not get it well he's across? To the left. Yeah, touchdown finally. All right, he's over here. <laughs> he's he's me out of the end zone with the football. But no, we got a there he is, there he is. methodical. So the Badgers in a 72-yard, 10-play drive. Took about five minutes to chip into this huge lead. Pretty clear from above to see that he got across. Yeah, the officials are always looking for the football. 
Well, you can see his entire upper body is across the line and in. I... Defense today. It's fun to watch him throw the football. Figured to be a duel between he and last year's winner, Bryce Young. But Ohio State's offense is just a, it's just a different level right now. driven way out of the end zone. You know, Ryan Day has not only had a quarterback that's throwing the football well, he's come up with a lot of different formations of pre-snap movement to affect the eyes of this defense, giving him some great spacing in these routes. Here's a motion they use. They hide Stover, the tight end. Safety kind of gets lost in, in, in not just the, the motion, the pre-snap, but just the, the route itself against Stover with that pre-snap movement. So for fans to understand, it's not just what you're dealing with when the ball is snapped. Sometimes it's trying to get on the same page with movement before the snap and the different variety of looks that Stroud is giving this defense. To Jim Leonard over on the Wisconsin sideline. He is on the field. What do you tell your guys? What can you do? Try to begin to make it a little challenging for Ohio State. They begin with a first down run for a short game. I mean, for the last five years, just to reiterate what we talked about in the open, Jim Leonard's defense has been the top, one of the tops in the country. Now, it's a young group, but statistically speaking, you look at points per game and third down defense, they've been incredible. Williams has a huge hole. More like a lane, and he just walks right through it into Wisconsin territory. Latu made the stop there. Really, it's a freeway. Yeah, it really is. Watch the blocks here by the right side. Climb here, kick out block here, and it just opens up. Dewan Jones, that right tackle, really good job. Matthew Jones, the right guard, and there's just no one left there to defend from the second or third level. 25 yard gain, and Mayan over 10 per carry tonight. Already a couple of touchdowns. Stroud's good enough. These receivers present problems. The tight end's involved. If you can't stop the run, though, you really have no chance of keeping them out of the end zone. Yeah, that's their first goal tonight because, obviously, starts with stopping the run. Stroud launches over the middle, and going up and making the grab is Stover, who holds on, going down hard at the Badger 23. Ball skills, athleticism, Ooh, yeah, for a converted linebacker, all of it. Came down really hard when he went up into the air. The safety back there, Latou, waiting for him, known as a physical safety. It's just how he came down. He's up on his feet, which is a great sign. But again, Stroud finding that seam between the linebacker and the safety, and the ball does come out. Good to see him up and running. That was a violent collision and then down to the ground where he landed awkwardly. So they don't give him credit for the catch. The ball came, out. came out. He didn't yeah. complete it to the ground, so it'll be second and ten. Stroud again, you said the last one with the chalk, checking out the defense, making those adjustments, looking over today. Got to be an uncomfortable feeling if you're a Badger right now, seeing that they are looking for the perfect play against your look. Badgers show some late pressure, and it's a handoff middle to Williams, who spins and fights through before Latsu gets him to the ground. You know, they change formations, and depending on how Wisconsin responds to their changes, that's what Ryan Day is very involved in communicating to C.J. Stroud. And see, so I thought Jim Leonard might move a little bit more after that. Third and three, they move it pretty quickly. Pitch it to Williams, who doesn't quite have first down yardage. Stop just short. So fourth and about a half yard here. See how Ryan Day, he communicates. The signals get called in. It's very quick. Everything executes and moves quickly. Did the Badger defense somehow come up with a short yardage stop? Get the football back. See, he saw a look. Ryan Day sees a look, and the, the signs go back up. C.J. Stroud looks over and makes his own adjustment. And they will hand it off, and Williams bounces it first down, and a lot more before they finally knock him down inside the 30. 
You see this a lot in college football where play callers are involved, almost like they're playing quarterback themselves. He saw the look. Remember, he studied all week for this opponent, these looks, certain situations, and he knows what he sees is going to work. Williams already over 100 yards tonight in his 11 carries. Only has one career rush longer than 25 yards, so he's not the home run hitter that Henderson is, but man, is he hit, as Brian Day says, a lot of doubles and... RBI singles. <laughs> it's Henderson back in the game. He has home run ability. He quickly darts for about seven. Holly? Well, Mayan Williams is running hard and angry, and that's exactly why he got into football in the first place. When he was a little kid, about eight years old, his mom made him start playing football because he had anger issues. He was getting into trouble, beating up kids in the neighborhood, and he told me, my mom was right. I was able to get my aggression out on the field, and that's still the case. But he has a big, goofy, fun personality. He actually wants to open a daycare center and work with kids when he's older, but he is a really fun kid, but boy, does he run angry. Yeah, he's not fun for opposing tacklers, that's for sure. Henderson wrestled down a yard short. You feel good for Mayan Williams having the kind of year because he really had sort of a hard luck career. Remember, he got COVID, couldn't even travel to the championship game when Ohio State took on Alabama down in Miami. He was a reserve at that point, then got injured, missed four games last year. Yeah, and I think now he's he's been able to grow through that uh, emotionally. It's a great story there from, from Holly about where he was as a person and, and where he is now. And I, I think for Ryan Day, the combination of having that one-two punch, they're so different in running style and able to stay fresh because the way they rotate them throughout the game. Rossi in the backfield, and they hand it off to the Fullback slash tight end, and he carries for a first down to the 15. I just want to make sure we're doing, we're talking enough about the offensive line because they've put on a clinic themselves. We're talking a lot about Ryan Day and Stroud and the receivers and Stover and the running backs, but my gosh, th th this offensive line is really coming together in week four doing a really sound job on just being able to push people around. They have a new offensive line coach this year that's working with them, Justin Fry, who came over from UCLA. But that is a, it's been a great half of football at the line of scrimmage. Stroud across the middle, and it's high off the hands of Stover, who's back in the game and trying for a hat trick. Well, C.J. Stroud, when, as soon as he threw this football, he was disappointed with himself. He, he, he tried to pull back, like, get him back, bring that ball back just a little bit. So close. He missed over for a wide-open touchdown in last week's route, and he, that's one of the things that disappointed him. He, the ball barely hit the ground, but yeah. he did miss his tight end one time. And, you know, and Zachman, the, t the safety there, if he, wasn't, if he wouldn't have been there, if he would have been maybe just a few feet to the right, I don't know if he's able to... Stover may have had a chance to bring that down still. Henderson picks his way up. You talked about the offensive line. You know, one matchup Badger thought they had a chance to win was big Keanu Benton, the nose tackle against Whippler and Jones and Jackson, those guards. They, they thought that was a matchup that they had to win and had a chance to win. Not so far. You saw Whippler. Yeah, you see Whippler there. And it, uh, and he's the one that's lined up directly across Benton. But he, did you hear that yell? That was him yelling after he went down. Good to see him back up and ready for the next play. Yeah, the battle up front between the guy they call Big Tree, Isaiah Mullins, and Benton. That is being won by those Buckeye offensive linemen in a oh, big yeah. way so far. On third and five, Henderson will be stopped short. So it'll be another fourth down decision for day they'll need two yards from the seven that time johnson and benton were there here comes the field goal team crowd booing you feel they've seen this offense move up and down the field for more than 300 yards in this first half, they'll settle for an attempt here for Noel Ruggles, who hadn't had to kick many this year because this offense is always in the end zone. A lot of extra points, but only his third field goal attempt. One for two, only missed one all of last year for the guy who kicked for the Tar Heels for three years before transferring over. 
And from 25, Ruggles drives it right through. So Ohio State, a methodical 13-play drive to add to the lead. Alabama got to be in the mix, right? Comes to mind, yeah. Remember, that's a, a five-year span, though. Kickoff taken by Grendo. Breaks a tackle, runs straight ahead and hard out across the 40. So 2.14 and three timeouts to work before Wisconsin to try to chip away into a 24. Badgers, good field position off the return by Garendo and Mertz looking to throw in first down underneath through it behind Clay Cundiff, his roommate the tight. One of the guys they try to get involved is a very capable receiver, but hasn't had much space tonight. Remember this is an Ohio State defense that is playing without a number of corners. I mean, they are down to only three scholarship corners. Cam Brown unable to play tonight. Denzel Burke, their their starting corners are out. You have J.K. Johnson in there. We're seeing Jair Brown. Even Ryan Turner, potentially a freshman who just lost his black stripe. So they're playing some young players. I'm surprised Wisconsin has not tried to test it more on the edge. Mertz on the run, checks it down, bobbled and caught. And it's Allen wrestled down immediately, gained just a yard. Mertz picks himself up off the, the carpet there. Tuimolo, I got him. Tuimolo off to the left. Look at that spin move. I mean, there are high expectations for 44. That play right there shows you why. He's long, he's athletic, big, and powerful. Got Graham, got uh, Graham Mertz off his spot and put Wisconsin in another third down and long. Four-man rush, Mertz has time, steps up, delivers over the middle, into coverage and incomplete. Looking for a flag with Skyler Bell. It was Brown, the freshman in coverage, and it's fourth down. About that, we just talked about these freshmen and how they're going to be out on islands from time to time. Brown, top left of your corner, crossing route, brings that right hand, times that up pretty good. A lot of times for a young corner on a crossing route, the left hand sometimes will wrap around the body of the receiver. There it looked like maybe there's a little contact, but he didn't pull the jersey or the hip. Able to get away with it, right, long right arm, round and knocking it away. Vinovich gets the punt away. Abuka is going to let it bounce over his head and into the end zone. So minute 19, Ohio State has one timeout if they want to get aggressive and add to the lead. Back to Chris Felica for the answer. We guessed that the obvious teams Alabama, would be the Alabama teams that have competed Clemson. in the championship. Yeah, this would be your two guesses. Well, we, we two have, obvious. Two obvious, but we ask you the, about the athletic review question this evening. Which two teams are the only two teams in the country to allow fewer points per game than Wisconsin since 2017? Clemson and Georgia. Alabama actually is fifth. Behind okay. uh, Iowa and Wisconsin as well. So. so not one of your tougher ones. Georgia would no. have been, I guess, the yeah, guest other been. than Alabama, yeah, right? On the receiving team, number 20. Half the distance to the goal, first and 10, Ohio State. So the penalty on the punt. And we'll back it up half the distance to the goal line there. Sonny Styles, safety. Well, Graham Mertz, we said he loves, he's a smile there, he loves the challenge of a road game, us against the world. He felt really confident. He's worked hard in his mechanics. He thought Wisconsin's plan was going to work tonight, but they just got behind on the scoreboard so quickly, and and it's gotten away from It sure has. Minute 19, you got to assume, especially after this penalty, off to the far left. See that? That push right there, the play was already, the ball had already landed, and that's the young freshman Styles. Torchio, one of the starters at safety for Wisconsin, knocked down. So that may affect what Ryan Day does here. 98, 90 yards from the end zone. And he'll just hand it off to Henderson. And you say, you he, say he they'll, does. they'll just hand it off. Yeah, he's definitely capable of housing it from anywhere. But uh, no hurry to spend Not that yet. final time out. Uh, I, I, I still think they, for the sake of working for these kind of moments and games, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ryan Day, not for tonight, but for that game when you need, you have it a minute, end of a half, end of a game, you need a field goal. This is different than working on something like this at practice. There, there's a different tempo there. He's still thinking about a field goal. They'll wind the clock after the change is set. And there's a short throw. Catch made by Fleming. Wrestled down in the field. And that would be a time to use the timeout if you're going to. And he does. 
Well, we talked about the challenge here of the Ohio State offense against the Wisconsin defense, how they've been among the best in the country, not just the conference, in recent years. And I think that, you know, Day and this Ohio State offense more than up to the challenge here. Yeah, I mean, think about what they came in with. You're your top receiver, maybe in the country, not playing. Um, and, and I think they set the tone with that opening drive. What was it, six plays, over 80 yards? They just went right down the field. And they really gave this Wisconsin defense a lot to look at and work with. And Ryan day just has that look in his eyes he is not letting up at least here in this first half wants this offense to continue to drive and attack and you know, I, I, like i said i still think they're thinking about trying to get three points here remember they get the, they've been hitting those seam routes right down the middle slot receiver the tight end right now i'm working more with the receivers if he has time to throw they're gonna get behind those linebackers between that free safety play in center field Stroud has been incredibly accurate and efficient on throws downfield. This one looped over the head and almost intercepted. Was it caught? Yeah, Torchio came across, tracked the football, and it is the first interception of the season thrown by C.J. Stroud, and the Badgers have it in Buckeye territory. And a, throw, a ball thrown behind Harrison, and what a heck of a catch by Torchio. The concentration definitely... Gets his feet down and has the left arm wrapped around the ball. Ball did not move. But, boy, you, you're seeing this in super slow motion. But if you see this in full speed, I mean, it, that, that was a bang-bang play. To see that ball come around ha uh, Harrison and then be able to catch it and then to be able to get his feet down, that's a, that's a great play. And it gives Wisconsin a chance here. Athletic safety at a 100-yard pick six against Illinois State in the opener. So Wisconsin has all three timeouts. Mertz on the move, checks it down, and catch made for a short gain. McAllister knocked down Cundiff, who is slow to get up. Obvious pain. Throws his helmet off, and they're looking at that left ankle. Oh, man. That would make a rough night much worse for Wisconsin if this injury to their tight end is serious. Junior from Wichita. Big play clay is what Mertz, who's his roommate, calls him. Kind of Mertz and two offensive linemen live together in one house. They're very close. And right away he seemed to behave like this was something serious. Well, McAllister, who was defending him, He's a big body as a tight end and undersized safety. He goes down to just try to bring him down and hits him right on that knee. Again, awkward landing, but right away, watch him reach down. The hit seemed to come on the knee, but you're right. He was grabbing below at the lower leg yeah. ankle. Big group of Badgers out on the field around the tight end. Really has been one of the top receivers. This is a receiving core that came in inexperienced. Only one guy, DK, who really had done a lot before. So Cundiff really counted on to be a big part of this offense. Jake Ferguson, a tight end last year, yeah. was the number one receiver on this team. He's with the Cowboys, and they've got the cart out. For kind of. See Paul Christ off to the right there, right there. For his player, a lot of these players see it. all concerned about him. Love to see that. It's a tough sport, man. You you see the the disappointment on his face. What's flashing through his mind right now is is that it for me for the year? All the work that yeah. you put in. Yeah. He doesn't know that, but I think he is reflecting. Some serious fear that this is something serious. Yeah. Yeah. You could read his lips. I believe he said snapped. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. Too. Mm. I think that was the reaction you saw when he when he went down immediately, reaching down there for his lower leg. 
So Wisconsin now, 26 seconds and two timeouts. Mertz steps up, has plenty of space ahead, starts his slide way before the marker. Have to spend that second timeout right here with 20 seconds to go. Ball at the 41. Yeah, they're not even worried. Ohio State's not even thinking about Mertz, who's you know, told us this week, I really worked hard on trying to step up in the pocket instead of trying to get to the outside. Pretty athletic guy. He wants to step up and climb and into that pocket, give himself a chance with more receivers. This week, Sunday night baseball is at Yankee Stadium. Aaron Judge continues his pursuit of history. Every at bat is an event here, trying to get to Eschenbach, the tight end, in for Cundin. If you saw him motion to the left, they run to the right with Allen. And accelerates for about five. Holly? Well, Paul Chris said that they are still evaluating Clay Condit, but I can tell you he is at the Wisconsin locker room. His family has been able to come down and be with him there and consult him. He has also been carted off in a previous game last year with a leg injury. This is, I'm told, the other leg. So very difficult news for Clay Condit. You saw the tears streaming down his face as he was carted off. But Paul Chris said, hey, how do the guys respond? We have to respond right now. And he said, we get the ball back right now. I need to see how will my guys respond when their backs are against the wall. Well, Mertz escapes pressure, slides down short of the marker at the 33. Well, he drops back. And again, we've, this has been another theme. Look at the receivers. Look at the coverage. But you'd like to see him step up and go to the left. A lot more room to run. I mean, if he stepped to his left right there, he had a easily had a first down. Their quarterbacks and head coaches, those are the guys that have the win-loss record attached to their name. As you see Allen step into the wildcat position along with Malusi. And they'll try to run it with the tailback keeper on third down. And Allen gets around the edge. Flag out as he barges into Ohio State territory. That's, the flag was in the gonna, middle of the run. Yeah, it's going to be a hold. It's a well-designed play in the zone read. Defense collapsed. He holds it and then gets breaks a tackle and shows what he can do. But the receiver definitely held the Ohio State defensive Holding. back. Offense, number 13. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Third down. Spot of the foul was beyond the first down marker, but it'll be... Watch about, long yeah, this is the, this is the challenge for a receiver. You, you have a back running outside of you, and that defensive back can see him. He starts to work out, and you grab, there's a tendency to grab onto him to prevent him from setting that edge. Pretty easy for the official to see. Makes it third and seven now. My guys bring pressure. Mertz immediately retreats and has to throw it away. He knocked him down, Michael Hall Jr., who wrecked Notre Dame's offense, making his first big impact play tonight. Well, they, they walked up pressure and then ended up, they, they weren't disguising. Sometimes you'll see this move and then they'll drop. This time, they're going to bring the pressure. They just overload him up front, bring one more than they can handle, and there's just nothing Mertz can do. You also saw Sawyer drop back into the flat, but everybody covered downfield and well-designed scheme there by Jim Knowles on third down. Better to talk about the one loss record. You know, Mercer's had to live with the fact that against ranked teams in his career, coming into this one, two and six. Four touchdowns now, 12 interceptions, Kirk, the completion percentage just above 50. These are against tough opponents, but you do judge a quarterback by his play against the best opponents. Uh, what I love to see is a team that's up 31 to 7, whether it's Ohio State or Ryan Day or anybody, and the energy from the head coach. Like, you would look at him in the middle of that, that huddle. I mean, he's talking to these guys because he's teaching a lesson. He's creating culture. Has nothing to do with the scoreboard. He, he's not even paying attention to that. It's 30 minutes of, of football to play in the second half. And his players respond to that kind of energy and leadership from Ryan Day. No doubt. And it's relentless energy. He demands it. Wants to see a sharp start to the third quarter from this offense. And Stroud comes out throwing and almost intercepted. Nick Herbig 
floated back into coverage and was thinking about a pick six there. Well, again, your scouting report says this guy, he is their best pass rusher, but instead, he doesn't bring the pressure. He shows pressure and then drops right into the lane and almost comes up with a pick six for the Badgers. It's the first time we've seen C.J. Uh, Stroud tricked there by Jimmy Leonard dropping his best pass rusher out into the flat. Herbie, a guy who's been a day one starter, comes from Kauai, but went to St. Louis High School in Honolulu, the famous oh, man. school that produced oh, Mariota, Tuatabailoa, yeah. many others. Stroud has protection and delivers a dart, a strike for a first down to the 47-yard line at Bouquet. Collect that one. He's looking at this flat defender, but he, I think he's locked up in man, so now you've got this cushion to be able to work to the outside. If that flat defender would sink, he'd throw that ball underneath, but he's manned up, so then he gets off of that read and makes the easy throw it to the corner there to Abuka. Stroud did have his first interception of the season in the first half. Torchia made a nice grab. He came close to a second pick there. Sure did. Henderson falls forward in the Badger territory before John Mena got him. Again, watch this offensive line. We keep talking about them. We want to give them their love. Whipler gets up there. Good push-out block by the, the right guard, Jones. Look at that. There's the vision by Henderson. Patience puts his foot in the ground, that right foot, and then gets vertical. Buckeyes are going to have two backs over 100 yards, it appears. Mayan Williams, 11 for 101. And Henderson now closing in with 84 yards rushing. Mayan Williams averaging nine yards a carry. Off play action, Stroud will look to the sidelines. Harrison hit, and the ball is dislodged. Nice play by Ricardo Holman. Yeah, Holman is the freshman out of Miami. Good job there. He's been kind of been asked to, to stay into that flat. He's been manned up often. And here just reacting quickly. Ball's thrown high, so he's able to get his shoulder pads right into the chest there of Harrison. Dude made a great one-handed pick in the game last week against New Mexico State. Need four on third down. Anderson motions out, two by two look, empty backfield. CJ looks to get the ball out quickly and throws it down to Fleming, who makes a man miss. Julian Fleming still running, galloping down near the 15 yard line. A huge gain on third and short. Holland, who just made the play before, missed that tackle. Yeah, and, and they're sitting back. I mean, look how soft the coverage is. It allows them to be able to throw it underneath. Look at this right here. This is a this is a receiver that was the number one ranked high school receiver when he came in. He's had some injuries the last couple years. When he's healthy and he's right, he's as good as Ohio State has. He's just a different kind of receiver. Much bigger, 6'2", 205, and is strong. He can run away and break tackles. This life is the DB. He gets an offense this good. Hallman makes a huge play, knocks the ball loose. The next play, whiff, just grabs that yeah. air yeah. as Fleming gets right. away. Yeah, all these receivers bring it something a little bit different to the table. Anderson, workman-like run. They don't mind the fact that it's a four or five yard gain. They want to yeah. be more patient, take those workman-like yeah. runs. Yeah, I mean, it's it's what I, the area that I think, again, they've, they've worked the most on. Show that versatility. I think they showed it against Notre Dame in the second half, and they've shown it tonight against Wisconsin. But again, Abuka brings something a little bit different. We don't have Smith and Jig, but tonight Fleming more physical. You've seen Stover make plays, and of course Marvin Harrison with that catch radius and speed. So all very different, all incredibly talented and gifted. Anderson. Is going to run through a tackle. He lost his balance, though, and goes down for a short gain. So third down coming up. They'll need about four. We talked about Stroud here for opening night. Just has the feel. He's, I mean, what is he, 20? He seems like a 28-year-old guy. And, it's like somebody got a phone call. I, I, you know, those fancy cleats you talked about? Somebody maybe in, somebody. Was it in Oregon maybe made a phone call? 
<laughs> more conventional looking cleats for the second. Take the, the watch left. Or maybe that was the plan. <laughs> watch his history. <laughs> Slants and touchdown. Julian Fleming fights his way in. And Ohio State, as they did to start the game, begins the second half with an efficient march. 60 yards, 72 yards in eight plays. Uh, you're just happy to see Fleming get his touches now that he's healthy. He's going to work from the outside and come underneath. Stroud feels a little pressure, steps up into the pocket, and then makes that throw. It's like a, again, when he throws the ball, it's, it's like a heat-seeking missile where he's throwing it. Exactly what Ryan Day would have wanted. The offense, which lost focus just a little bit, had to settle for a field goal late in the second quarter, right back to work, right down the field and building the lead to 31. C.J. Stroud, Heisman front runner. Yeah, it's very early, but this is scary. And who's going to stop him on their schedule? Sidelines tonight, adding depth at the tight end position. It's got the stash going. And look who we got here. They, uh, yet another Herb Street in the pipeline here. Zach, who st you stand, he stands okay. on his toes. You got to be careful with this place. Trying to... I, <laughs> I know. I feel like I'm like this. <laughs> How's your season going? Good. Yeah. Good. yeah. He's down at Cincinnati St. Xavier. This is an unofficial recruiting visit tonight. Are you, are you checking out this Ohio State program, see what this is all about? Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he loves, coming, uh, loves coming to the games. Your wife Allison is over here in the booth. You drag her out here. We got plenty of time around. to bring the entire extended family up here. Put her on here in the fourth quarter. Her and Shay can take it. You and I can head to the, to the bus. I like where you're going with this. <laughs> well, Merce, I mean, you've been in this position. You know, you, when it's not what you expect going in. Yeah. And this is not what the Badgers thought was going to happen tonight on, on either side of the ball. No, and, and all you can do, you're a competitor is just continue to go and encourage you got some young linemen out in front of you uh you, you know you got to be a leader you're a veteran he's been through he talked all week this week with us with you and i and holly about the adversity he's been through and how it's made this his foundation now so it's a good test to that tonight dk on the end around they felt they really had learned from that loss to washington state they lost at home to the cougars respectable team but they self-destructed there were some turnovers some penalties on wisconsin like stuff Mertz and others told us they really felt they'd grown and improved from that. This was a whole nother deal where they stepped in and started taking haymakers right at the opening bell here. Wisconsin fans, Kirk, are going to want some perspective from you on this throughout this quarter. Like what, what, what does this mean for us the rest of the way trying to win the West Division? And off, off think, the left side, Allen the for a short that, game. The thing that stands out to me, because I've followed Wisconsin very closely since Alvy, Coach Barry Alvarez took over, and they've never necessarily been the most talented team that, that Ohio State or Michigan plays, but they play with them and they beat them. And this is the first time you can remember Ohio State, Wisconsin playing where it's just got away from them at the, at the outset. And to me, it's it's some youth in some key areas. And the quarterback, you know, continues. To remember his first series, he throws behind his yep. intended target. His first throw of the night, it's intercepted. And the next thing, that's 14-0. Personal foul. Offense, number 50. 15-yard penalty. Second down. It's another personal foul. There was one of the PAT, and now Logan Brown has been flagged. You think about how the programs are built. It's a different philosophy. Everyone would love to recruit as many four- or five-star players as Ohio State does. 66 on this roster. But, but in Wisconsin's defense, got 20. In defense of Wisconsin, this number in the Big Ten, I mean, that number's up with Alabama and Georgia and Clemson. Sure. Urban Meyer brought a different philosophy and approach to recruiting. You know, the old days when Earl Bruce was here or even John Cooper, it was more of a oh, put a fence around Ohio and maybe sprinkle in a few here and there from the south. Now it's the opposite. Screen. Bell gets a block, breaks a tackle, and fights out across the 35. It'll make it third and manageable. So I, I think it's a combination of Wisconsin's young and they've got to, you know, they obviously got to get better, but also don't you feel like Ohio State with the skill that they have and the quarterback play and Ryan Day and what he's doing with the receivers and Brian Hart line and the development and it just feel like Ohio State's in a really different place right now. 
And Wisconsin is going to always be a developmental program. They're going to recruit as well as they can. They're going to really develop players here over time, and they've got a great blueprint. Crowd back in and on third and four. Buckeyes bring pressure. Mertz escapes for now, and fire is incomplete. Bell didn't really have his head turned, wasn't alert for the throw, and it's fourth down. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is a discussion that, you know, if we were doing game day and doing a studio show, we could go on and on about this. I, it, but, but Paul, I, I got so much respect for Paul Chris and the job that he's able to do as a coach and as a play caller. But tonight he's got, he's talking to one of his tackles, a five-star tackle, Logan Brown, who he's making sure to understand the personal foul. But he's got, you know, starting tackles out. He's on the road in this environment. You knew coming in it was going to be a tough ask. Ugly kick. Just shanked out of bounds off the 50-yard line. This is starting to put it together, but the Clemson defense is, is definitely back to the, the drawing board, and they got to play much better. With that defensive line, you thought they'd apply more pressure. Stroud rolls out off the play action, extends the play, and just fires it into the dirt, and he gets knocked down late. Holly? Well, you talked about all the great pieces of Ohio, Ohio State, and they are trying to be next level with everything they do. So they are using what is called the Aura Ring. It is a wearable personal device. It is a ring. It is very cute, but it tracks all kinds of things like your heart rate, your resting heart rate, your ability to sleep, your REM sleep, also your blood oxygen levels. Each player is wearing this so that they can then come back in, show the app to their people, and let me show it to you right here. It's so cute. My heart rate, I have got a lot of movement points so far tonight. I am huh? on a championship level right now myself. <laughs> Working from sideline to sideline. That'll do it. Make sure you recover. You want, you want a championship recovery score, right? Because they chart that every single day. Yeah, Yeah, and they said that they think it really helps because the kids come in and say, what was my score? What was my score? Because they want to sleep and recover. Sleep is the most important indicator of recovery and Mickey Marotti, the great performance coach here, he is on to the next level science to make it very special. And who helped really get a lot of that started was Chip Kelly and his days at Oregon. Chip Kelly and Ryan Day, really close friends. There's a holding penalty on Ohio State. Their backs it up, so they're the behind the sticks and back in their own territory. Dwan Jones, a big right tackle, who's had a really good night. This time just grabs on to the chest there of that linebacker, Turner. I'm glad that they don't give our TV crew, like, the rings to chart, like, the quality of sleep and whether we're rested not, and recovered. In game day, I would have flunked. I would have been not allowed on the set back in those days. I'm having a hard time from <laughs> Thursday <laughs> to, to Sunday. Look at you a ring. I would lose. I would fail. <laughs> Are you allowed to sleep between Thursdays? No, turns out I'm not. No. Naps, maybe. Yeah, naps in the day here and there. An awesome job. I'm enjoying on, on Thursday night. Thanks, bro. And Amazon with the great Al Michaels. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, I have to bring my family into the booth to see them. <laughs> well, fortunately, they have access, and it's a big booth. That's what it's come to, though. Huh? Exactly. Just meet and greet in the booth during your games. <laughs> right. Well, we'll see you in January. Honestly, I'm like, January 12th, I'm all yours. Empty backfield, five receivers on this third and 13. Badgers do bring four. Stroud has time. Beginning to struggle a little bit. Wisconsin took a while, but they're beginning to make things at least challenging for Stroud. Yeah, they're dropping two safeties deep to take any of the shots away. And what's different is you've got five underneath. You know, what, the, these seam routes that they were able to hit earlier. See that safety drop down into the middle? Get a linebacker there that's able to take that cross away. So Jim Leonard making some adjustments. Remember All his season long, be competing Lots to rejoice about. It's going to be another home victory for the Buckeyes. Badgers backed up at the two here after that penalty. Allen takes the handoff from four yards deep and fights to avoid the safety as Eichenberg, who's been active tonight, flew in there. In the timeout, here's oh, what happened. This was exciting. This is the best stuff. Boom! Oh, I mean, he got knocked out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Great recovery. I want to bring in Bill Lemagne. Was that targeting? Did it have the indications of targeting, Bill, as they try to get Brutus? I wouldn't call targeting, but a couple good blindside blocks. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's it's defenseless it. player. That's a defenseless player. Brutus going into the protocol back there. We'll, we'll keep, Holly will get a report on him. I mean, we were watching there. There were three or four hits. That was exciting. 
That was exciting. It, it got me going. It's a 31 point game here. <laughs> Allen, again, from his own end zone, picks his way or his short game. I mean, again, Marty Jarmillo, our, our best hit special. Marty, what is your concern for Brutus? Look, 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 look at Brutus' head, Marty. Not looking. Defenseless. <laughs> that was absolutely targeting. But there's a lot of cushion in there, so I yeah. think he's going to be okay. Exactly. He's, I'm sure he's a little His stunned. hat is not okay, though. That little hat oh. got knocked off. And oh, he was caught <laughs> off guard there. All the experts weighing in. That's that's where we are here. <laughs> well, Buckeye faithful are, are still here in, in huge numbers and making life tough on Mertz again. The closed end of the horseshoe. Showing pressure. Don't bring it. They back out. It's a screen, and they sniffed it out and knocked it down. Deflecting that was Tyler Friday, who's yep. coming off the bench in this Ohio State defense making a play. Again, he's going. I think the freshman left tackle bails a little early. Try to get the Ohio State defense out of position, kind of faking that screen off to the right to Allen, working back blindsided. And Friday, who's not kind of a forgotten man. No, kind of forgotten. There's so much depth at that position. Great quickness to be able to get to him and then got close enough to be able to get his hand up and deflect it away. Luinovich has shanked a couple. He's had a punt of 23 yards. The last one was 18. Flag down. This is a really ugly low kick on the bounce fielded by Abuka in Wisconsin territory. Spinning again, spinning, and is finally knocked down after a nice return inside the 40. Ended up being a 44-yard punt, a, a low, ugly boot. Nothing really going well in any phase tonight for Wisconsin. And then we'll check the flag. Buka, that looks a little bit like the, the collision with the inflatable guys yeah. down there on the end zone. He's pinwheeling around. Have you ever done that? Around. Have you ever done this? I, I want to now. Oh, they're fun. Where did you do that? We could do that after the game, go down there and <laughs> rough each other up down there. I mean, it's, I mean you, you can <laughs> <laughs> I got some other plans after the D game, but I mean, maybe D another time. D D if you got low Aaron center. Brown over here, the yeah, former, former fullback, fullback low guys. center gravities. Low man Adrian. wins. Low, in man, low man wins. Okay. And you got to build up the speed. Well, I'm, now you're starting to see if you have experience, if you're, you're, yeah, yeah. you know the technique. Yeah. My kids got to get those for birthday parties, so I'd hop in there, run around, and just blast them into the wall. I don't know if we needed a nice long chat about what's going on here. But. Middle formation on the defense, covering up the center. The penalties decline, first and ten, Ohio State. So Ohio State will take over in a reminder that tomorrow, 10 o'clock Eastern time, Sunday NFL countdown. Green Bay and Tampa game. Rodgers and Brady head-to-head. -head. Cowboys and G-Men on Monday night. You keep an eye on all the games Brian, yeah, Sunday and Monday, yeah, I Brian, assume. Yeah, sure do. Brian Dable bringing some life to the New York Giants, getting them to believe. I think he kind of set the tone early in the year when he, battling with the Titans, went for it at a critical moment, and they got it. This team's really buying into what he's doing. And how about Cooper Rush stepping in for Dak Prescott, spinning yep. it? Thank you. You gotta have you gotta have two quarterbacks in the National Football League. Anderson picks his way. Let's get out of Holly with a report on one of the developing stories here in the third quarter. Breaking news, guys. This is big. I ran all the way down here. Brutus is okay after being examined in the back. Are you okay, <laughs> Brutus? Yes. How many yeah. fingers am I holding up? Three. Good. We think he's okay. He had a little misconstrued hat up here, but the hat is on. Brutus says he's okay. Good. Good. Okay. Thumbs up. That, that'll there come as go. a relief to Mr. Ooh. Corso, Holly. Not in protocol. Oh, yeah. Not in protocol. Original. The original mascot. Calls it his first love. LC, go with the balls. I missed the end of the show. We were he went with smoke. He brought Smokey up on the set, the whole thing. All right. You got a W on the pick then. I bet there's a everybody. Bet Knoxville's in a celebratory mood tonight. Oh wow, they were they were ready. A, watch him showing this athletic ability, great kick out block, but he doesn't quite get him down. No problem. Guess has no idea where the ball is. He just Joe goes over top of him. He has he has such spring. He's able to land and still hit the ground, moving and accelerating. 
powerful and very twitchy. Both Ohio State tailbacks who carry the ball over 100 yards tonight. That's 107 now on Henderson. He's toted it 19 times. Stroud delivers on the sidelines, and Fleming's wide open, and he's knocked down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal again. Watch the corner out here, Bale. I don't know where he's expecting Fleming to go, but he's almost to the goal line. I don't know if that's a miscommunication of some kind, but Justin Clark, transfer out of Toledo, just bailing. And again, Ohio State, a lot of times, it's not the downfield shot. C.J. Stroud's looking for that open man underneath. Take those 10 or 15 yards. An absolute short-range missile. And Stroud continues on fire tonight. Third touchdown. Wow. Yeah, he knew that he had to get it in there because the safety read it. Preston Zachman, he, he broke down on this. You know, and it looked like he might have a chance to be able to make a play on it. But because of the, the because of the speed and the velocity of the throw by Stroud, he saw him, recognized him, and then put a little bit a little, little bit more on it and got that ball in there. But a tight window. Now touchdown number four for CJ. 234 yards. You say he can make all the throws. That's one of them, right? The the fastball, super yeah. accurate for short range, great touch on long balls. Can make the strong arm throws to the sideline, do everything. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch Stroud here. I mean, he's going to recognize right here to the top. You're going to see this safety. And he realizes that he's got a good eye and a good feel. He breaks on it. But I think it, what the, the difference there is just the ability to get the ball thrown right there. See that safety, how quickly he broke on it? He wasn't worried about the inside coverage. He had him beaten. But safety collapses down, but drives on it. And a really good concentration as well by Abuka. You've seen a little bit of everything tonight from C.J. Stroud. Different kind of throws all night. Three different receivers have caught touchdowns. Abuka, a guy that they call a warrior as a wide receiver. A tough guy, a physical guy. He'll do all the dirty work. Big appetite for blocking, but you see a spectacular hands catch that reflects hours and hours of catching those fastballs out of the jugs gun. Paul Chris frustrated. Here we go with the uh, Badger-like tradition. It's, it's jump around here, not at the end of the third quarter. They just jumped ahead with 2.22 to go. Wow, we're still in the third quarter. I just <laughs> recognize that. We're also not in Madison, but I, I, I like House of Pain travels. I'm, I'm good with it here, too. A little bit, a little bit wistful for us. We, have, we haven't touched on that tonight, but uh, this could be it, partner, in this booth in the yeah. Ohio Stadium. You may have heard about the shifting broadcast rights starting next year. We're going to save every minute we get here and throughout the Big Ten this season. Grendo knocked down at the 20. We'll check in with Kevin Nagandi. Chris, now for our RB Studio update. Arlington, Texas, K.J. Jefferson, two touchdowns in the air, one on the ground. Arkansas within two. They had the chance to take a lead just now on ESPN. Cam Little, 42 yards out, under two minutes to go. Going to the top. Oh, that bounces back. AM holding on to a two point lead with 90 seconds left on ESPN. Back to you, Chris. Keep us posted, Kevin. Bench from the 20. Seven completions for Mertz tonight for 64 passing yards. All of them have been short. Allen, nice open field tackle. I'd say Tommy Eichenberg's played an outstanding game, really from the first series. Yeah, I mean, he's usually known last year as more of a, of a box, kind of traditional Mike linebacker that we could thump you in the run game between the tackles. And, and I think this system with Jim Knowles has asked him to do that much more, and there's a comfort level there. Just seems to be playing a lot faster and roaming around, defending the pass, blitzing at times, and, of course, defending the run the way he always has. 
Mertz on the move, second and six pitches to the sidelines. Catch made by Bell. You think about him sort of like funneling the ball, being a physical guy, but out in space, he, he's impressed me tonight more than holding his own. Yeah, out there. you remember he was the defensive MVP in the Rose Boy, had a bunch of tackles that night against Utah, and I, and I think he really committed himself. He's, he's a junior out of Cleveland, Ohio, at a St. Ignatius High School, a traditional powerhouse in the state. Great pride, and I think when Jim Knowles came in, right away he recognized, okay, this is my guy. You know, he had last four years, he had Malcolm Rodriguez, who started in Hart Knox, Rodrigo. This is this is that position. You need a guy who's who's very cerebral, understands the scheme, gets guys lined up, and helps his defense play fast. Allen in the wildcat in third and one. He was looking to throw, and he will pitch it, and it's complete. Neschenbach the tight end, so a completed pass for the feature back for the Badgers in a first down. Yeah, and, and Tanner McAllister right here starts to come down. He starts to kind of feel, he sees that motion. Now he's, okay, I got to get up, I got to get up, but gets up a little, not a little, a lot too late, and makes it easy there for the Badgers to pick up the first down on third and short. I'm telling you, a 10-yard game with a passing game tonight, that's, that's, that's big. been a big game. Got to rely on the big 230-pound, 235-pound running back to make it. What, what can he do? This is the more familiar role. Allen just makes a cut. Big, tall, 6'2 running back. Goes for eight. Holly? We're seeing Braylon Allen, who's a young man who's never really played running back much before he got to Wisconsin. He actually came in as a safety. But Gary Brown was his running back coach, and he said, Gary Brown built me from the ground up. Well, in April, Gary Brown lost his life after a fight with cancer. And so Braylon Allen has been overcome with emotion. He has worn cleats throughout the season that had Gary Brown's face on them. He got a tattoo. He's got the ball again, Holly. Breaking tackles. Go ahead. And, and he just wants to honor this man who taught him the position. He said, everything I know about being a running back, I learned from Gary Brown. A lot of the team was gutted when they heard the news of him passing and Braylon Allen making sure he is honoring that coach. Yeah, it speaks to his class and also to the power that coaches have within the lives of these young men, what they mean. Allen's so grateful that Coach Brown taught him the position that he now excels at. But in a big hole here in Columbus, the end of three, 45-7. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Big the athletic trainer who was with him on the cart and appeared to say snapped. So certainly wish him the best for his recovery. Allen, meanwhile, still running hard down inside the 40-yard line. Jean-Baptiste got him to the ground. And that's that's when you really learn about a, a running back and the spirit, how he runs, 45-7 into the fourth quarter. And you, you love to see he's still running with, with an attitude, still running with determination, still competing, most importantly. Going to the top backs in FBS with yards after contact. Ohio State's done a good job corralling him. They haven't let him get out. He's got the ball again. Follows a lead blocker. They chase him down from behind at the 36. That's Eichenberg with his 14th tackle tonight. Impressed to see a center. Anytime there's a center athletic enough to, to lead around. And that's what I saw that time. Joe Tipman. Junior, 6'6", 317 pounds. Snaps the ball, and he's trying to get out in front. Allen just kind of put his hand on his back, threw him into an Ohio State safety. Once again, Allen in the Wildcat in third and two. Jackson Aker, the fullback, is throwing a block for him. He reroutes himself and runs through a tackle. Nice cut back to the right. First down at the 30. It ended up being a cut back, yeah, all the way to the right. I mean, this play is designed. Look, the, the guard's pulling over here. This play is designed to go over here. He goes there and then works all the way back. Watch that backside guard. Here we go. Get a little left. And then it gives you an idea of the patience and the vision by the big man that time. He didn't give up on the play and just lower his head. Good job sustaining blocks as well on the back side there off to the right. There's some good backs in the Big Ten. So Mo Ibrahim from Minnesota, big game again as they hammered Michigan State. Obviously the, the tandem here at Ohio State. Lake Quorum, a couple of touchdowns from Michigan. Penn State's got some yeah. young backs. Oh, it, it's a terrific, it really is. terrific stable of running backs in this conference. Minnesota's starting to really 
All right, the cream's starting to rise a little bit in the Big Ten West. I know it's still early in the year, but with a veteran quarterback in Tanner Morgan, Mo Ibrahim back from that injury, have some veterans around. I mean, they, they, you going to row the boat in the West? I'm rolling a boat right now. Yeah, I, I am impressed by P.J. Flex team. Second down keeper again, and Allen's going to be stopped up to the beginning to catch on to this Wildcat. Scores from around the Big Ten at 34-7. Resounding road win for the Gophers to and, stay undefeated. And, and Michigan State lost last week out at Seattle. They come back home. People are thinking they're going to be mad. Look what happened. 34-7. Iowa with a big win. They've been struggling to get a first down. They get 27-10. See Purdue wins. And Maryland scores some points. They do. They are capable with talking about low receivers. Are great scary. receivers. But uh, Blake Corm had the big day, and J.J. McCarthy, Michigan just getting better each week. Finally played a real opponent this week. Wide open, man. They flip it across the middle, and the catch is made by Garendo, who motors down to the five. Ohio State showed the linebackers blitzing, and then they bailed. And look how far back they bailed. Mertz kind of sensed that. It's just simple. Just check it down. You know, get it down. Give it to a, a guy who can who can go and pick up yards after the catch. Grindo is out after that, making that play. Limping over yeah, near the bench. Hobbled a little bit. So they bring Allen back in. He's got it. Makes his way again, changes direction, looking for any crease, knocked down at the two. Again, the game is over at this point, but I, I love seeing teams, especially early in the year, fight. It's a 12-play, 78-yard 70, 70 drive right now for Paul Chris. It's been a long night. It'd be very easy to just kind of lay and lean on the Ohio State defense. These guys are, are continuing to fight. They'd like to have a, a one-play 78-yard drive, but it's not really a team built for them. No, no. They tend to work clock. Allen has been busy, man. He's just grinded away on this drive. He's carried it 10 times and thrown a completed pass. Here's his 11th carry in the drive. you got to be well-conditioned, a lot of stamina to, to carry it 11 times in a drive. <laughs> he looks pretty tired on the ground there. Cody Simon there on the stop. It's third and goal. <laughs> Look at him digging deep. Oh, yeah. Good push, though, by the Ohio State defense. You know, they're, they're, they're showing a little fight back themselves. Look at they just blew that play up. It's tough on those polars when the play side linemen are getting pushed back into the backfield. It was slow developing, and finally it's cleaned up by Cody Simon. Number zero, have one more carry in him on this drive. They fake it to him. Mertz wants to throw and wide open. The catch is made by Jackson Aker, the fullback. And that's the first touchdown toss for Mertz tonight. Yeah, I think they were so concerned with what you just said that the safety right here, Hickman, does not pick up the fullback, thinks it's just going to be a run play, and he kind of gets lost and then realizes that late play action and just too late to react. Good call by, there by Paul Chris, and the Badgers finally get their touchdown tonight under 10 minutes to go in this game. See, Allen, he was so tired. I mean, you don't see a guy carry a ball. 11 times in a driver. He threw himself at a blocker and just kind of laid on the ground after the play was over. But happy that his teammate got in defense. He was born in Kauai. Ended up going to Honolulu to do high school. And his, his parents, Bruce and Robin, educators, part of our extra yard for teachers salute. Robin still works for the University of Hawaii. Interesting, they've actually moved in. Oh, you, heard, you heard of like living in your parents' basement? They now live in his basement. <laughs> they bought a house here in Madison. That's great. They moved, moved into the basement there. Well, we enjoyed speaking with him this week on our Zoom. What a, what a class act and a really talented football player. Class act and a guy who brings the typical Hawaiian attitude to the football field. Passion, yep. hard work. A ferocity that goes hand in hand with the, the culture of warm family relations. 
Ohio State still with their first unit in. And Henderson takes the handoff, makes a cut. Trevian Henderson sidesteps another tackler and is slung down across the 35 by Torchio for a first down. Holly? Well, you're talking about Nick Herbert bringing that um, Hawaii flavor to Wisconsin. He actually made snacks for the entire team and is a Hawaiian specialty called Masubi. And it is um, spam with rice wrapped in seaweed. And everyone on the plane and bus got to have one this week. You lost got to, spam. Got to or had to? <laughs> I mean, I know that spam, well, spam is consumed a lot in Hawaii. I, I, yeah. I'm not feeling it. Well, you've, you've been over there a bunch. Have I you, do. Have you ever try that? I find other things far more delicious yeah. over there. Just do regular sushi. Oh, my goodness. Big hit delivered on a buka by Torchio after the catch. Pays the price and moves the ball near midfield. Well, anytime you catch a ball coming across, you know there's a potential defensive back where there's a safety or a corner here it's a safety he just lowers his shoulder to read next book torchio uh, with the head yeah torchio has been all over the field got had that big interception that time he good job by good job by abuka holding on to that ball but got some hit. frustration on that hit his head yeah 45 14 take that The late pressure, Stroud delivers over the middle and lofts it for Fleming. Pass underthrown, and Jay Shaw caught up to it and broke it up. Well, he couldn't quite step into the throw. Wisconsin did a pretty good job here of getting some pressure. Caden Johnson is able to, just as he releases the ball, he's able to get right there. So he couldn't quite step into it, but definitely had it. Julian Fleming behind coverage, behind Jay Shaw, the corner, and had a touchdown if he's able to put more on that football. Brian Clark is, has no idea that it's 45-14. to 14. Still in attack mode, 8.21 to go. Not often have been able to get near Stroud and affect him tonight. Did that time. We'll use the play clock and apparently spend a time out here. Does he see it? Yeah, Ryan Day caught it at the last second. CJ was unaware, so. Buckeyes trying to play this out. By 31. Coach still intense, yes. Big nights catching. And this receiving room just gets stronger and stronger. And Brian Hartline is one of the best in the country at recruiting and, and developing those receivers. Next book, our receiver himself, of course, who played in the NFL. Running back room, not bad either. Henderson continues to build on a 100-yard night. He's, and, you know, Brian Hartline really developing quite a reputation for his ability to recruit. And, you know, he's, you look at the room that he has currently, you look at the, some of the players that just left, and who they, you know, Garrett Wilson, Olave, who are now playing in the NFL, some of the players that are already verbal to Ohio State for their next class. So you know, you, that's the difference now with Ryan Day, the quarterback room and the receiver room is just... A lot of NFL personnel. Didn't that make recruiting easier? I mean, how much? I know he's good at his job, but how good do you have to be? Have you seen our quarterbacks here lately? Have you seen all those guys on Sunday out of on his And then, you know, you know, the pipeline at quarterback, too. Yeah. Stroud, you got Dylan Royola coming in. Stroud says an elusiveness gets away and checks it downfield. And trying to make a one-handed catch is Harrison. And if flag comes out, Shaw was defending him. Great job of keeping that play alive, right? I think sometimes people sleep on the athletic ability of C.J. Stroud. A lot of times he doesn't have to show it because he That's throws in rhythm. Defense, number one. 15-yard penalty from the previous on scrimmage. Automatic. Very yeah. elusive on that play. Got away from a couple guys. Yeah, he did. I mean, a lot of times you, you think about C.J. Stroud, it's drop back, hitch, ball is out. You know, it, it's not very often that you see him, watch him at the bottom. What I love to see is Marvin Harrison initially comes back to the ball, and then he sees that his, his quarterback's in trouble, and then he decides to work downfield. So good job on the scramble drill there, and they get the pass interference. A couple of Olays on that yeah. from Stroud. Look at a throw across the middle. It's a dart. Habuka dives for the end zone. Touchdown pass number five for Stroud. And a second for number two. 
Yeah, this is a different wrinkle for Ohio State to go RPO and read the backside safety who collapses down, and then you can hit the glance route right behind it. Feels that safety, gets down into the action to stop the run, and that's the balance. What are you going to do as a safety? You're going to let that ball get handed off to potentially Trevion Henderson and sit back, and he's got that big hole running downhill at you? Or are you going to come up to try to slow him down and run support, and now the quarterback can pull it and throw it right by you? Ohio State with half a hundred plus two midway fourth quarter not missing Jackson we have games on up here too we're crazy we watch them all day Kansas State just scored a touchdown they're, they're up 34 now to 20 in Norman in Norman eight minutes to go SC and SC top on the road they're in Corvallis I mean they're, they're taking body blows in Corvallis that's a tough one Arkansas ranked ahead of AM, but an underdog in that game a slight dog losing Hard fought, crazy finishes of the field goal that could have put him ahead. Doinked. The state. Mike Norvell, they're up big today over Boston College. You know, last Saturday, piece of history. The, the top 10 teams scored more combined points than in any week in the poll era. It goes back to 36 and won by 401 total points. The biggest beatdown Saturday ever for the top 10. And that's a problem when this sport is so top heavy. We're seeing a little bit different flavor though today with some couple I, of top 10s being challenged and going down. 1936? Yeah, that's where this poll began. 520, 521. Someone was scoring 521 in no, the, no, the most saying, That's the most ever. Ever. Yeah, in the poll era. When they, ever, they, ever, that was their first year they ranked teams. Okay. And so going back to then, the top 10 had never had kind of a beatdown or higher scoring. Not Saturday, today. Like last week. No, yeah, not, not today. today. Different story. Here, yes, but not everywhere. Uh-oh. Allen takes off a foot race, and somehow, after an exhausting night, Hope will see behind on the scoreboard, Allen is still firing. Braylon Allen having a night in the losing cause, 75 yards. And that will not make Ryan Day or Jim Knowles, his defensive coordinator, happy. A well, breakdown there. He's kind of hesitated in, in putting up some, putting in some of the backups, but but here he did. And Kai Stokes, who was playing safety, just kind of late to break. I mean, it's one thing to have a good block up front, offensive line. They got up to the linebackers, but you put a safety in the middle of the field to help you out. So that last Wisconsin drive, Allen carried it 11 times. Not many times this season you're going to see a drive carry it that many times in a drive. This is a one-carry drive. Yeah, you get some good blocks up here. They get up to the backers, but watch the free safety right here. He, he's got to help out. You know, you get good blocks. This opens up, right? But look in the back of that safety. He's got to come down and help. He's wait, and he's a, he's a little hesitant. And because of that hesitation by Stokes, the big fella, Allen, shows that if you're going to take a poor angle, get some good blocks, he gets running downhill. He'll take off and take all those yards. He's up to 165 yards now after that long carry. Yeah, a lot of them coming after this game was completely out of hand. Yeah, oh yeah. Admire the, the effort, oh yeah. the energy. He's an impressive guy and an impressive back. And Jonathan Taylor maybe looking in tonight, proud of the guy that he's mentored. For sure. Caught five passes. Threw that one. And that with uh, Cundiff, of course, suffered that leg injury earlier tonight. And Buka will just make the fair catch. Back to Kevin for an update. Chris, Kirk mentioned it. Here's the highlight. Adrian Martinez with a 15-yard run for the Wildcats. And Kansas State on the road right now, holding the lead. Martinez feeling good. Meanwhile, mentioning a couple of games played now over on ESPN. Number 13, Utah up 7-0 on Arizona State. Sun Devils' first game since parting ways with Herm Edwards. BYU just got on the board. They're up at home against Wyoming. That game on ESPN, too. Back to you. Kevin, how about the job? Adrian Martinez coming over for Nebraska. Everybody criticizing him. A lot of turnovers at cost Nebraska. Playing pretty well for Kansas State. 
He would love to have a day like that against the Sooners when he was with the Cornhuskers. Yeah. Kyle McCord spelling Stroud, who after his five touchdown pass game, the seventh of his career, by the way, in 16 career starts. Think about that. Almost half his starts. He throw five touchdown passes. It's a good batting average. McCord is a sophomore from Jersey. Considered a very high-quality backup yeah. day. Has a lot of trust in this guy. Kyle McCord and Devin Brown both, who's a true freshman behind him. Their, their quarterback room is stacked, especially by today's standards. This is the young freshman, Dallin Hayden, who in, in mop-up duty against Toledo had a 100-yard game last week. Watched him in high school quite a bit out of Memphis. Christian Brothers, really talented back. Can catch the ball to the backfield. Not as big as Mayan Williams or Trevion Henderson, but boy, he is slick. He can get through those creases and, and get downhill with that speed, and he can outrun a lot of people. Mayan Williams had his 11 carries at 100 yards early. It was really Henderson who came in to sort of pay, play the change of pace back. He's got 121. So 200-yard rushers and a five-touchdown night for C.J. Stroud. Yeah, it really started with the opening drive where they went six plays, something about 88 yards. And he's done a little bit of everything, just in command. Second year as a starter, feels different. Almost looks like a coach out there a lot of times. And even without Jackson Smith and Jigba, who's unable to play tonight, everybody wondered would they be okay at receiver. Fleming's been involved. DeBoop has been involved. Marvin Harris and, of course, Kate Stover, the tight end. A great leader, not just a talented quarterback. Usual accurate throws, but after the catch tonight, Buckeye receivers have 130 yards. That's a big number running after the catch. Hayden again, they push the pile forward. Nice gain on first down. So go down inside five minutes and the takeaways from this game. Ohio State answering the challenge of the conference opener against a very respected defense and looking very, very much like a overwhelming favorite really in all of their games except perhaps a road game in Happy Valley. That'll be a noon kickoff, not the whiteout. And, of course, the home game here at Michigan comes into this place. Iowa comes here. But who's going to stop I mean, Scarlett at, and Gray? At Penn State it is a game. You always look at that game when Ohio State travels to State College. And then, of course, Michigan at the end of the year. Iowa just doesn't feel like they're explosive enough to stay with Ohio State, especially the game being in Columbus. I mean, at Michigan State right now, the Spartans are reeling Iowa at home. Penn State is one that you can circle as, you know, it, it potentially competitive. Maryland can score. If there's a sneaky one you want to look past, it could be Maryland with Mike Loxley and the way they score, especially with Michigan the next week. So... But they, they, they would have to show up flat and, and not take a lock in. Yeah, yeah. I think the two that you circle are the obvious ones. Penn State on the road and Michigan with, with Jim Harbaugh, the way they're playing. But they have to come to Columbus after last year's game. A lot of people excited to see that game. Hayden again, knocked down from behind, but a first down at midnight. Midfield, uh, not quite midnight. Uh, here's the all state. Is it a Freudian slip? Oh, you say up to midnight there. The well, here's the the current playoff predictor odds by all state to make the playoff. You know, Georgia, Alabama haven't changed that much since preseason. I never Clemson's I never, odds actually, they believe, have come down just based on the battle the Tigers have had so far. I never understand how you guys come up with that. You and Bear and all your guys, how you guys yeah. figure those yeah. numbers out. I would just kind of throw stuff against the wall on the bus after the game. That's how it, <laughs> there's some algorithms involved, and I promise you. You know, the big, the big gainers from preseason chances of making the playoff to now were USC, and we talked about the Trojans being in a fight in Corvallis. I, Tennessee I, and Ole Miss. Yeah. Volunteers yeah. have way into contention now. Yeah, I, I just don't understand the one where, well, I think Ohio State entered the year at 82%, and somehow I think they've... They've dropped to 68 percent. I'm trying to figure out how that would how that would occur. Um, and that's the one thing I noticed. There was I'm thinking, did they look that bad against Notre Dame, or like what what happened? They went into the computer went into panic mode after opening night. Have, have you seen them lately? Listen. 
you can you could look at a number of factors. It's the competition, maybe the Wolverines. So you